Hi, and welcome back to another episode of The Search. I'm Elliot Manning. Um, this week, I've got a, uh, a fantastic guest with me. Um, his name's Nick from DSJ Global. Um, Nick's been in recruitment now for about four or five years. Um, has done a hell of a lot, but I uh, won't take too much off, off of that right now. We'll go into that a little bit more along the podcast. Um, Nick, if you want to introduce yourself, mate. Yeah, cool. So I, I'm Nick. Uh, yeah, I work for Faden International, which is a um, recruitment company headquartered in London. Uh, yep. I work for the brand DSJ Global. We focus on um, end-to-end supply chain recruitment. Um, yeah, four years, coming up to four years in March. Um, so happy birthday, me. A lockdown yep. birthday, probably. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's been an exciting time, exciting couple of years, uh, which we'll, I'm sure we'll dig into now. Yeah, definitely, mate. I'm, look, I'm keen to find out. You've you've obviously come out of your studies, um, jumped into recruitment at a company called Haig, um, you know, kind of learnt your trade there. But why recruitment? You know, how did this even happen? I mean, everyone says oh, I fell into it. Did, did you fall into it? Did you get introduced to it? Did you want to do it? <laughs> yes, yes and no. Um, so I, I had my last couple of months at university. I had all of the aspirations to go work for the big four, go work in finance and the banks yep. and everything else. Um, had yeah so many interviews and then I decided to, to interview with um, a couple of agencies Haig being one of them um, yep. I, I knew one of the guys who actually worked over at Haig as well um, for quite some time so I thought well, yeah why not let me go and have some interviews did um, came out the other side and I thought yeah this this is something it seems like um, I might like doing selling things so selling people um, and yeah that's how I fell into it, kind of. Did you did you have a perception of recruitment before you got into it? Did you kind of have a view of what recruiters were like from you know people you knew in it? Did you think it was you know a, a wide boy industry? What was your what was your thoughts on it, mate? Yeah, I, I did because um, I had a couple of guys who were a bit older than me that I'd seen. They come out with uh, flashy cars, flashy watches, <laughs> um, fancy clothes, as as is the typical stereotype recruitment. You can go in. And yep. everyone tells you you can make a lot of money very, very quickly yep. um, at a young age. So that's kind of the perception I had before going into it. But then interviewing with so many different companies in recruitment, you you see the, the good and the bad sides of it during those interviews. Um, yeah, so course. it's not all flashy cars and fancy watches at all. There's a lot of hard work that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah, I feel like everyone thinks that when you get into the recruitment industry itself, you know, yes, it does have that stereotypical way about it of money, it's all money orientated, but the work that goes in behind all of that and the hours that us recruiters put in, is, you know, yeah. we we work for that. We work hard for it. Um, Absolutely. But unless you're kind of in the, you know, the mix and the game itself, you know, people don't realise that. But um, yeah. one thing I really wanted to, to, to go into, you know, your sector of choice, you know, how did that, yeah. work for you how did you choose because now you're at dsj you know a phenomenal business big big brand as well um yeah. globally so how did that transition you know how did that happen uh yeah so i kind of <laughs> funny story i referred one of my friends i used to live with at university to faden international yeah um, i ended up joining hague associates um my friend then referred me back to faden international back to dsj so that's how it all started. Um, yeah, four years ago now. So um, joined. Uh, I actually wanted to join the finance brand, which was Selby Jennings. Um, yeah. But the guy who I interviewed with, I'm probably more suited to DSJ. Um, different personality-wise. Yeah, exactly. So the way that I talk is a bit more the market of, of DSJ than it is to let's say the bankers of of the city of London and so on. So that's what they okay. kind of pushed me towards obviously I didn't know much at the time I'd only had six months experience so yeah that's how it happened and how I ended up in, um, in DSJ. At that point and if you don't mind me asking did that kind of make sense to you at the time were you just kind of going with the flow of it did you I suppose debate against that or for it what was your thoughts at the time? Yeah no so the guys who interviewed me they had x amount of years more experience than me uh, my manager Matt and my old manager Paul in, in Berlin I thought you know what, I'll listen to them I'm 22 years old. I don't know as much as they know. So, um, yeah, I, I listened to them um, when they kind of shoehorned me and into DSJ. And all these years later, it look where you are now. Yeah. Thanks, guys. If you're watching this, thank you both. <laughs> <laughs> so t- tell us, you know, where are you at now, at the moment? What's your role? What are you doing? What are you up to? Yeah, so um, my title officially to, to the wider market is, is a vice president, uh, market specialist, um, to the more simple terms among us it's, it's just like a sales sales manager type role yeah. um kind of focusing on everything which is um non-manufacturing and service related so that's the core bread and butter of what i do um 
I'm known as a market specialist, which is a new thing for us in, in the business, which is quite exciting, yeah. um, which kind of means I'm like the go-to person for clients who have specific niche requirements. So uh, yeah, it's quite an interesting one. Um, there's a few of us now popping up in Europe, but um, yeah, one of the most senior in, in Europe for that business, for that role. When you say senior, do you have like certain responsibilities other than being a market specialist? Do you manage, mentor, teach, help others? Do you more in a principal route? What, 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 what yeah. side are you? So, so, yeah, no, so it's a bit um, a bit of everything, if I'm honest with you. So I mentor uh, newer people who are joining the business. I hold training sessions for the principal consultants and below in our, in our brand as well. Um, obviously, everything online at the moment. But um, yeah, do that. Uh, I also have a lot of insight, insight into the strategy of what we're trying to do at DSJ, expansion Amazing. plans, um, how I can help and how I can bring added value to the business from an outside perspective, let's say. Yeah. So, so yeah, a lot of um, strategical work that goes on behind the scenes as well, which has made the role interesting. You know, this is fascinating because a lot of businesses out there in recruitment, especially, you know, they attract a lot of staff and, you know, candidates to their, you know, to, to come and work for them. But and they promised them a progressive route of, you know, in two years, three years, you could be doing X, Y and Z. Um, and something I've seen along the years of doing rhetoric and notice is that, you know, working at a company, obviously, like where you are, they've yeah. given you that. And it seems like that you've I mean you know, mate, like in four or five years, you, you're now at that point of mentoring, training, you know, strategy, market specialist. I mean, that's a hell of an yeah. achievement. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, I, th- I think when I first joined, when I was going through the interviews, everyone was saying, like, you can do this, you can reach this, you can earn X amount of money, et cetera, et cetera. But you don't actually believe it until you see it or until you do. Yeah. And when I joined, it was happening all around me. I was like, these are 24, 25 year old guys and girls who are managing teams of six, seven people who are earning a lot of money. Um, and then I've kind of gone through the same trajectory as them. Um, so yeah, Faden just kind of push you to the maximum of your abilities, which is Definitely. a really, really interesting company uh, to kind of work for and, and grow with, which has been exciting. Yeah. My manager's 29, I think, or 28 maybe younger i'm not sure but um yeah, yeah so so young he, he leads the whole yeah. brand for example so that's a team of 30, 25 30 people that he's leading as a, as a 29 year old fantastic which is huge do you know what the the opportunity you know and the potential in this market is is incredible and people you know yeah. need to hear more of that which is why i do a lot of this you know i think yourself and there was one other that i spoke to who does a completely different market of quant you know in a different business you know and four or five years later he's managing a team he's you know, globally known as a big pillar. He's done incredibly well. He's earned the money. He's now progressing into what's next. Um, yeah. And similar to yourself, mate, you know, you're at that point, if not, you know, potentially further. And yeah, hats off to you. Um, I, I think, you know, something I want to learn from you, you can take your hat off if you like, Nick. Um, there you go. Not today. <laughs> not, <laughs> so, not down here. <laughs> yeah. um, no, look, mate, I'll be honest with you. Like, you, you know, there's, there's a lot of recruiters that are trying to join the industry and starting out. What would you suggest to them or show them and tell them from your experience and what you've seen so far, whether it's personally or through Faden as a business? Yes. Yeah, so, so Faden, if, if you were, what you need to be comfortable in is that the business you're going to join gives you that opportunity. So yeah. if you can't see people around you who are graduates or who are as young as you, who are going somewhere, mm. then it's probably not the right recruitment business because there are so many agencies out there who say, we'll do this, we'll give you that, we'll do this, but not many follow through. So just yeah. make sure you do your homework, check them out on LinkedIn, speak to as many people as possible before joining yeah. um, and just see that there is young people like yourselves who will be joining who can progress quite quickly. And it's not just, the 40 year old 50 year old guys and girls who are running things and you're just going to be a, a piece in the cog at the at the bottom because that's not what you want to go and do yeah definitely. So that'd be my number one piece of advice for sure do you how did you choose the route of you know you that you wanted to take you know because yeah. to be a leader to manage to have that you know mentality is not for everybody um yeah. not everyone naturally has it it's something that can be taught to some but not to others where where did you get it from who taught you who mentored you you know was it a, a training scheme in the business or was it something that you went to someone else for yeah so uh, the good thing with Faden is when you join as well they, they kind of assign you a mentor someone who's been in the business for a few years um you can also be proactive and reach out to so many different people that everyone's willing to lend you 10 15 minutes of their time um so i did that as much as possible when i first started found out should I go down the management path or should I go down the super biller path or what sure. should I kind of do so I, I did all of that and I found something which worked for me not worked for the company 
basically. Yep. So what worked for me at the time was I did a period of quite a bit of managing. I then did a bit of um, uh, super billing, as we like to call it, which is just focusing on billing. So I've done both sides of things. Now taking a more strategic role, still getting my hands dirty, but yep. leveraging off as much as possible from other people and, and knowing what I want to do and what works for me at, at 26 years of old, uh, age. So that's what I did. Um, do you have suggestions again for those that have been in the game for a couple of years? Um, yeah. They might not be getting the support that they want in their businesses to get, you know, the mentoring that you have or had. Yeah. Is there any other recommendation for them that you would suggest? Yeah, come and interview us. <laughs> yeah. We'll give get you a Get yeah, over to Faden ASAP. Send me your CVs. <laughs> Um, no, I think being proactive is the number one thing because no one's going to reach out to you and say, do you want help? You have to reach out to them and say, I need your help. I know you're good at managing. I know you're good at ex expanding new clients or whatever it may be. So yeah. go reach out to those guys and girls in the business and, and leverage as much as possible from those people, um, even in different countries or even from different agencies. Um, yeah. Speak to them, even if it takes an interview with them to dig out information do so i think that's yeah. a very very important thing to be doing as well what's next for you mate what's what's the plans you know what's next for nick you know have you got a, a progressive you know plan or are you taking it as it comes because this year's been a, you know held you back like where are you at yeah um to be honest with you i haven't had the worst year in the world um somehow everything fell off a cliff in march um yep. managed to kind of turn it around since June, late June, July time. So it's not been that bad, but uh, next for me is, is to become a senior vice president. Um, yeah. So I need to do a bit more to get to that target um, and then probably go abroad. We, um, we've we just announced another three or four offices to be open in the next couple of years, which is quite Fantastic. exciting. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see if uh, abroad is next maybe. Do you have any ideas where you want to go? Uh, well, I was interested in Dubai. Dubai is not yeah. on that list at no. the moment, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. um, yeah warm the warmer the better for me i'm not used yeah. to or not, Don't like not cold liking weather. it's cold weather outside no Fine. but um yeah we'll, we'll see um essentially los angeles which will be quite exciting yeah. is there certain things that you need to hit in the business to be able to be relocated abroad with, within the business um yes and no so if you've got one day's experience and you start off in london you say okay i want to go to la it's, it's not going to happen you need to prove that you can bill you need to prove that you can win new clients you need to prove that you can do the, the job basically you need to be at least a principal consultant yeah um once you do that and you put a business case forward to your manager and his manager etc then it's, it's absolutely fine there, there's well, it, so many different opportunities yeah they've got to put the trust in you right and a lot of recruiters exactly. you know uh, you know they contact us and a lot of them are fading you know move internally from you know office to office you know and yeah. I guess recruiters need to understand that, you know, until you've proven your worth and you've shown that you can do the job wherever it is, and especially if you're starting off in London, then do what you got to do and they'll, they'll, they'll give you the opportunity, right? It, exactly. Our, our business is a grad growth business. We we don't typically yeah. hire the more senior people in the market. We do at the moment. We are looking to bring on quite a few, but yeah. um, our CEO, current CEO, he was a graduate 10, 11 years ago. Um, my manager was a graduate eight yep. years ago, nine years ago, like everyone started off in the same place as you. And that just shows you how many different paths you can go down and, and how quickly you can develop and grow to lead an office, lead a region, lead a country, become a managing director, for example. So yeah, it's yep. really exciting. So are you hiring? What are you doing? What's your team like at the minute with numbers? Are you trying to, you know, attract people using, you know, hopefully this podcast is people listening in that yeah. might want to, you know, join the business and ask you more questions. Yeah, we are. We, we're looking to add another six headcount, um, ideally for, for January time. So once we come back from the new year. So um, if anyone watching is interested, do send me across your, your CV. I uh, can put you in yep. touch with the right person. But yeah, six for January. And I think we want to grow the team by about 16 this year. So um, next well, next year, 2021. So yeah, a yep. lot of growth plans for, for Faden, uh, for DSJ especially. Are they open to backgrounds? Do you want juniors? Are they, you know... Fussy with all that at the minute. Yeah, all backgrounds. All, all background, all backgrounds, all seniorities. As long as you've got some kind of um, sales experience, that's absolutely fine. If you've got recruitment experience, perfect. If yep. you're a graduate, also fine. Amazing, mate. And tell me something. Um, this year, you said you've had a good year. Um, and for those that are in recruitment that have maybe struggled and not had such a good year, um, different markets, of course. Um, what have? What, what would you? Say to them, you know, in terms of, you know, have you done anything different? Is it literally just your market? Is it the, is there different methods that you've done to, to get to where you are? Is there any secrets that you can give away? <laughs> any secrets? Um, yeah. 
I think going back to the real basics, I know it sounds a bit cliche, but literally picking up phones to candidates and finding out where they're interviewing, getting all of their leads, all of their managers' names, um, and really going back to the basics, following the money, following the leads, rather than just doing what you think worked before COVID because it's a completely different market. Um, Yeah, doing that and then basically just following up as as I did from day one. um, That's what I'd recommend pick up the phone speak to as many people as possible i spend about four or five hours a day on the phone so yeah i'd give you that advice absolutely pick up the phone make the calls and you get the money and you guys are fully remote or back in office no we're we're fully remote now at the moment every single one of us is is working from home um the office i think will open again on the second but only if we need to be in following boris what he says (laughs) yeah of course So you're yeah. doing all this, working from home, you're managing your training, you're strategizing, you're doing four or five hours of calls a day. Um, yeah. I think you, you're kind of showing that anything's possible, right? Um, yeah. As, as cliche as that sounds. But do you know what it is? Like when you are that way inclined as a recruiter and you're putting in those hours, those times, and you know, you've got the ability to have a good year from you know a global pandemic, but at the same time, you've got responsibilities across the board. Um yeah that's where those people that are trying to join recruitment can see those that have been successful and that's what it's taken to do it. Um, which is what you've done or doing rather. Yeah. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'd love a two week holiday somewhere warm and get a massage and everything else. But at the moment it's 12 hour days behind the screen, which is my life sitting on Microsoft teams and zoom, um, and phone calls, but you have to do what you have to do. Don't you? So, any last words of wisdom, Nick, before we wrap this up? Anything that you would say to people out there listening in? You've told us about your hiring. You've told us about, you know, yeah. what you do, what you're up to. Um, any more sort of, you know, sharing information for, for, for any recruiters out there looking for that inspiration? Yeah, I'd, I'd just say don't give up. Um, again, I know it sounds cliche and I know everyone probably works their socks off, but don't give up. Your next call could be your 50K deal. Your next call could be your biggest client for the year ahead so just don't give up keep being tenacious keep at it and just do the basics right um i think that's the the best bit of advice i could give anyone um senior or junior in the market at the moment do you know what i've just made a lot of notes on this call but that last one your next call could be a 50k deal and i feel like so many people give up in recruitment and then the next call could be literally their 50k deal and they have no idea what's around the corner but if they stop doing it they'll never know um Nick, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, mate. Um, I really appreciate your time and joining me on this. And, you know, we've not worked together before and I've seen you pop up many, many times across the network. Um, so it's good to finally have a chat with you. I, I'm glad we've spoken now. And this is why I love doing this because I've got to see, you know, your success story and your journey. You haven't been in the game for four or five years. Yeah. Um, and you've done a lot more than a lot of other people would have done with 10, 15 years in the game, mate. Um, Thank you. I know that because I'm a rep to rep, so I've seen a lot. Of, a lot. I've seen it all. <laughs> yeah, um, I've seen it all. Yeah. But no, look, mate. Um, well done. Thank you very much for your Appreciate time. Appreciate it. Um, if anyone's got any questions on this, I will be directing them straight to you. If anyone is interested right. in working within the business, definitely worth talking to you about it. And I, I'll be throwing them in your direction. But other than that, Wonderful. mate, have have a good evening, and um, you too. We'll be in touch, definitely. Definitely. Thanks, Elliot. Have a good one. Pleasure. Take Cheers. care. Bye, mate. Bye, bye.